Hi everyone, I'm Heather Jassy. I'm the Senior Vice President of Members and Community here at Etsy. And I want to invite you to our third fireside chat. Um, today we're here in the Etsitorium where we have our company meetings and um, where we hope the sound quality is better. I have been still receiving all the convos um, with feedback on that. So I'm hoping that today is a little bit better. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about the Fireside Chats, if you're new to this, um, these are part of some new ways we're uh, launching to connect with you and to answer your questions in real time and really to let you get to know people at Etsy um, and the work that they do, but also to give you, you know, really honest answers to the questions that you have for us. Um, so every time we focus on different areas and we take seller questions and um, interview different admin from across the company. So in an ideal world, we'd answer in real time every single question, but we need to get the right people in the room. So today, the right person in the room is Jamie DeLang, our head of search, and I know you have lots of questions for her. Um, I do want to give a verbal disclaimer that anything um, recorded in this video is true as of today um, at, at the time uh, that we post it, but things change frequently, as you know, so if you're watching this in the future, be sure to check the date and make sure that the material is still current. Um, so welcome, Jamie, our Senior Product Manager for Search. Thanks, Heather. Hi, Jamie. I'm happy to be here. Sitting here <laughs> amid the succulents with me. Um, so let's see. Um, I have so many questions for you uh, from sellers. So uh, before we jump into those, I wanted to just ask you a few questions just to give people a little bit of overview of your team and what yep. they do and then how we think about Search at Etsy. So can you just start by telling us a bit about your history at Etsy yeah. um, and what your team works on? Yeah, so uh, I started at Etsy about five years ago, so mm -hmm. a long time now. Um, and I definitely did not start working on search. Uh, I started working in customer support, actually, and uh, you know, fielding questions from sellers, questions from buyers. Um, and I just got so frustrated only being able to answer people's questions and not actually being able to help make mm -hmm. their experience better. So. Um, I you know, started studying a lot about technology and learning a lot more about how product development works and was able to move into a product role. And I've been working on search specifically for about two years now. Um, and my team is a team of engineers and designers. And really what we are focused on is building a search experience that helps uh, the overall marketplace. So that means we want to help buyers find things. We want to help sellers sell things, and we want to create a dynamic that is long-lasting so that Etsy can be around uh, for the long term. Cool. I know you've worked in um, both customer support and trust and safety, yeah. and I think it's it's really interesting when people do that and then move into product because they have a, a really, like, very close to the issues that sellers have and write us about and, like, a sensitivity to, totally. like, the pain points. You understand all of these nuances of, yeah. like, you know, uh, when, what happens when a thing goes wrong. Um, I think in trust and safety in particular, like you get to see like these really hard moments for both buyers yeah. and sellers. And it's, it's really clear that in a lot of those situations, there's just, uh, nobody's totally at fault, that right. so, some things just go wrong yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Um, let's see. So since you work on search, can you talk us through what you decide to work on? There are obviously yeah. a host of things you can work on, and how do you, how do you decide what to prioritize or, right. or what you think about every day? Right, so a lot of the time we're thinking about uh, the fact that we have so many items on Etsy. We have like 30, mm -hmm. over 30 million items, and that's, that's a lot. Uh, it's a lot for any buyer to sort of get through. So we think about how can we create a search experience that um, really makes the marketplace understandable and friendly to buyers, make sure that we're distributing sales among sellers. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure that uh, people can be successful here. Uh, it wouldn't be good if, you know, only a small subgroup mm -hmm. of sellers were able to actually make a living here. That's not what we want. Um, and then we also think about, like, how do we, um, how do we make sure that we're building an experience that keeps people coming back. So not just helping them buy things, but helping them buy something from somebody who's gonna be there to you know, help them if a transaction goes wrong, mm -hmm. to ship their items quickly, to like provide them with a really good quality thing that they're mm -hmm. excited about that makes them wanna come back and buy something from either that seller or another seller. Yeah, cool. I mean, I think, um you know, in the in a marketplace as diverse as Etsy is, yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, search is a is a uniquely difficult challenge. Um, a colleague here has said before, like if uh, if you you know if there's one person in the world who buys a massive pair of crow wings, does yeah. that exist anywhere? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, how do you no, figure totally. out what else that person right. wants? Right, and, and a uniquely Etsy challenge. Yeah, I feel like you know at a normal like sort of 
big box e-commerce, a lot of people are just going to buy you know, a six pack of Charmin. And right. your job as a search engine there is show them the six pack of Charmin. Whereas right. people here are coming to get inspired, uh, you know, to find a gift maybe for somebody that they, you know, they're, I think I like to think about it as uh, turning an idea into an item. Right. So they, they want to build up uh, some like, they want to, they want the special like magic looking that is for a feeling. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and 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 if you're looking for something that's one of a kind or doesn't exist in anywhere else right. in the world, you may not even know how to search for that thing. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so can you give us a rundown of some of the recent updates to Etsy search? Yeah. So um, the two two major changes we mm -hmm. sort of made recently um, were uh, one change to strengthen local markets. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a vibrant buyer community in the UK and in Australia, and we've heard from talking to those people and from looking at our uh, internal numbers that it's really difficult to buy things cross-border for them. Mm -hmm. uh, long shipping times, uh, you know, VAT fees, right. uh, you know, just, especially for new buyers, it's like sort of a downer. They find something they really like, and then they're like, oh, the shipping cost is so high, I can't possibly right. get that. So. Uh, we made a change to make it easier to find UK sellers if you're in the UK and easier to find Australian sellers if you're in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and those changes are only in those markets. Uh, we haven't done this anywhere else, uh, but we're really excited about it because we are seeing UK sellers and Australian sellers getting more sales. And we're also seeing people buying more overall in those markets. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's one thing. And then the second change was uh, we added some new signals to search that we've never looked at before. So. Like I was saying earlier, we don't want to just make sure somebody can buy so buy something. We right. want to make sure they can buy something that they like, that like ships on time, that they have a really great experience with, uh, that is a high quality item. So we've added uh, marketplace and customer experience signals mm -hmm. to search. So that's you know case looking at your case history, looking at your review rating. Uh, we also want to make sure that Etsy is like a it's a person to person human kind right. of connection, and we want to make sure that it's very clear that you're buying from a person on the other side. So things like about pages, uh, factor into search now, uh, having completed policies. Um, and the goal with all of those, those additions is really just to make sure that we're accounting for the whole experience, not just optimizing for finding a thing and then purchasing it. Right. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, we were all really excited about this most recent search release because I, we've been more transparent than ever yeah. with sellers about how we're doing search, how we think about search, and I think, you know, it's really frustrating to be a seller and and to feel like search is this black box and to like feel like there are factors that you can't control and not know what they oh, are. Oh, totally, so yeah. I think uh, I think a lot of sellers were really excited that we just said, okay, here's how we're thinking about this. These are the things we, yeah. we consider. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Um, so speaking of that, what goes into search relevance? So um, we. We outlined this all really well in a help article we recently published, like you're talking about, um, and I totally recommend everybody go check that out. It goes into really great detail about all of the things. But um, at a high level, uh, we're looking at uh, relevance. Uh, so that's basically how well does this query match these keywords? Mm -hmm. And that's really the most important thing, because if you don't have the right keywords, you're just not ever going to show so up. So tags and titles yep, still matter. Exactly. Yeah. Tags, yeah. titles. Super important. Mm -hmm. um, that also in includes like putting your item in the right category. Those things get counted as tags. So making sure that it's in the right place is also a big deal. Um, we also look at the quality of the item. Mm -hmm. So, so tell me a bit, a bit about that. But, yeah, been a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I think this is really confusing because mm -hmm. uh, when we say quality, I think people start to think like, are they looking at my pictures? And like, is there a group of people judging me somewhere? Yeah. But, Really, I mean, like we have 30 million items, right. so we aren't going to be the arbiters of quality. We're mm -hmm. looking at how buyers interact with your item when they see it in search. Mm -hmm. So if somebody sees your item in search and they click on it, if they favorite it, if they purchase it, that all gets counted as a positive signal toward your item's mm -hmm. quality. Mm -hmm. um, and for new items that we, we don't have any information about, those get a, a score that is similar to the other items in mm -hmm. your shop. Okay. Um, so. We want to make sure that new inventory gets into the market. Yeah. So um, photographs are still really important. Oh, yeah. yeah. Photographs are like the biggest thing to making somebody click into your item. Mm -hmm. Other things could be making sure you have uh, readable titles in a mm -hmm. listing card, making sure your item is competitively priced. So mm -hmm. I, that doesn't mean cheap. It means it 
it fits with the thing that you're selling that'll help people click through. Yeah. Um, and we have education on pricing too. Yeah. Um, I actually feel like when something is too cheap, it oh. makes me feel like the quality is not good yeah. and I will be less likely to purchase it. I think, it. yeah, you it don't feels, trust yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Um, exactly. And then beyond that, we also look at recency a little. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not an overpowering signal, and I don't want to advise anybody to start relisting over and over again. Yeah. Uh, but we do want to keep the listings fresh. We know people come back, and we want to make sure somebody's still like in their shop uh, that a buyer is going to be able to see new items when they come to the site. So that's really about active and engaged sellers. Exactly, yeah. Um, and then we look at location, like I said, in just Australia and the UK. Um, and then marketplace quality signals. Uh, so do you have an about page? What are your reviews like? Have you violated Etsy's policies in the past? Um, have you had any recent cases? How much, like what percentage of your orders recently have resulted mm -hmm. in a case? Um, and after that, uh, we also look at shop diversity. Mm -hmm. So uh, this isn't uh, how many different kinds of things do you sell in your shop? I think that term is a little confusing. We're really looking at how many shops are in the results. So. Mm -hmm. Buyers come to Etsy looking to explore the wide variety of mm -hmm. items that we have. And if one shop is filling up all of the first page, we're kind mm -hmm. of breaking that promise. Right. So we want to make sure all of uh, the results represent the breadth of the marketplace. So uh, we talked a little bit about this in the last question, but just to be more explicit, what can a seller optimize in their shop and listings? Yeah. So. Um, Keywords, tags and titles, mm -hmm. obviously big deal. Mm -hmm. um, making sure that uh, you have phrases in your tags, that the most important words in your title are toward the front, uh, mm -hmm. that those titles are readable and concise. Mm -hmm. um, anything that you can do to make somebody buy your item is a thing that's gonna help you in search. So having really great photos, having a good description, yeah. um, you know, making sure that you're providing, putting it in the right category, that you mm -hmm. have a great price. Um, offering amazing customer service because reviews also get counted. Um, so going, you know, making sure you ship your items on time, making sure that you're providing an awesome customer experience. Yeah, um, yeah I think a lot of what we're trying to do is uh, help sellers who are doing the right thing be successful. Yeah. So the things that you would do to be successful in your shop should also help you out. In and search. I think I think the things that we want sellers to do to be human yeah. and to really provide yeah, yeah, that yeah. very um, human experience that we want shoppers to have on Etsy. Like right. we want to reward that in search results exactly, as well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so let's just jump into questions. We have a lot. So we're gonna start with questions about the more recent search questions and then we'll move on to the questions about localization. So um, the first question is from Anne of Pretty Vagrant in the U.S. This is about cases. Mm -hmm. She said, I would like to know if an open case closed in a shop's favor will have negative impact. Also, will someone simply flagging a shop without Etsy finding anything wrong with the, from the flag cause a ding? So we want to make sure when we're looking at these signals that we're looking at things that most accurately map to the experience a buyer is going to mm -hmm. have in your shop. So first off, uh, flags that are just closed without anything happening, don't get countered against you mm -hmm. at all. Um, for cases, we do a few things. We're looking at only the recent cases in your shop. So if you had a problem, you know, years ago, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're also looking at the rate of cases, not just yeah. did you have a case. So um, you, we know that shops that have a high volume are gonna have a problem every now and then something doesn't yeah. go wrong or the buyer's confused, maybe they're trying to use a case to send a convo. Yeah. Um, I've seen that happen when I worked sure. in trust and safety. So uh, we're only looking at the rate. Um, and you know, over time we know that buyers could use these signals to be abusive. Yeah. And that's something that we're going to keep in mind and we'll you know, change the way that we weight things or change yeah. exactly what we're looking at to account for those, those problems. Or there just may be a wacky buyer from time Ex to time. Exactly. And sellers exactly. to feel penalized. Um, I know a lot of sellers have been really stressed out about this. I've seen a lot of um, comments about this in the forums, but I think the takeaway is the focus is on your larger pattern of behavior and not right. a single thing. And we're really looking for shops that are like doing what they should. And uh, most of the time, and we know that stuff happens and we don't expect that people are perfect all the time, right. but we're looking at like a larger pattern. Right, and, of and also like we're looking at positive and negative attributes. So like yes. one mistake isn't gonna Right. put a black mark on your right. account. Right. 
Um, so qu another question about reviews. Lauren of Green Street Mosaics in the U.S. says, um, since reviews are a factor, I would love to know what Etsy's doing or what we as sellers can do to encourage more buyers to leave a review. That you did say we're, we are just looking at the quality of the reviews. Right, right. We're, so we're looking at your star rating, not the number of reviews that you have. Um, obviously, it's not totally in your control to get a buyer to leave a review, and we don't want sellers, you know, we don't want you to move into a space where you're harassing people or right. feeling like you need to. Um, so that's, that's one important thing. On our side, what we do, uh, we also want a lot of reviews. We know mm -hmm. that they're super important to buyers, and uh, seeing another buyer having a great experience is one of the biggest things that will lead a person to a purchase. Yeah. So uh, we send an email reminding mm -hmm. people to leave a review. If they have the app installed, we send a push notification as mm -hmm. well. We also badge in the app to try to get more people to leave reviews. Um, and actually, I was looking at this question, and it looks like uh, the uh, the questioner has already done a ton of stuff in her own shop, yeah. uh, so like uh, leaving a note in the receipt, basically, and the note to buyer saying, hey, can you please leave a review in the mm -hmm. shipping notification, making that a, just a part of the note, leaving a physical note in the box. I think that that's... Such a nice touch. I, I love it when I that happens. I've also had sellers uh, give me like a hashtag mm -hmm. that I can post on social media okay. with like an appreciation photo, and that's so fun. Then you can like start following them on Instagram, um, and also I think so. I think that's a really great idea. And then when when you see that hashtag come up, you can also go comment on that thing and remind them to leave a review. Such a good and idea. They can also use the buyer appreciation photos we have on Etsy, so yeah. that that even creates a richer experience for future buyers. Awesome, lots of good ideas. Um, let's see. So we have a question about one of a kind items. This has been a concern. Um, Jennifer of Jenny Lee Creations in the U.S. says, so those of us with mainly one-of-a-kind items get penalized in search placement with those who manufacture or import ranking higher in search results. So I just want to respond to this, first of all, to say like, reselling is not allowed and importing is not allowed on Etsy. So, um, that, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> we start with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what um, else so do you have to say The, about the other thing is I think... Uh, not only that, but uh, manufacturing isn't the only way to have repeat sales on items. A lot of our handmade sellers have, you know, consolidated lines. Yeah. They sell in multiple quantities. So I don't want to mischaracterize sure. that as well. Um, but it is it is hard to sell one of a kind items. It, there are a lot of challenges with it. And one of the things uh, that comes along with one of a kind items is we don't have that repeat purchase information. Right. So. Um, that can make things more difficult. We've done a lot to sort of mitigate that problem, though. Uh, we do still look at the clicks and the favorites that come from one-of-a-kind items, and we also look at the overall quality of the listings in your shop over time. So, like I was saying before, new listings mm -hmm. get sort of a, how they get a score of all of the other listings in your shop. Um, so we're sort of bootstrapping those new one-of-a-kind mm -hmm. items mm -hmm. uh, in the search results. Cool. Um, let's see. Um, so let's move into questions about localization. Yeah. So um, Anne of Modestly in the UK says, is it harder now for US buyers to see my shop? I get a lot of interest from the US, so I need to know if the changes affect my visibility there. Um, so this has been really confusing for a lot of people. And I'm going to say point blank, Anne, this does not affect how US buyers see your items at all. This is only happening in the UK, and mm -hmm. the change should make it so that more UK buyers see your items in the UK, and nothing should change about the US. Win-win. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, I have another question about localization. Jessica of Tiger Lily Il Illustrations in the US says, do these changes also affect US searches? If someone in California, for example, searches for an item, will all related items in California show up in a search before items that are located in Florida? So I guess, like, how do we define local? Right, so really, right now, local just means if you're in the UK, and uh, you're a buyer, you'll see more items from the UK. Uh, if you're in Australia, you'll see more items from Australia. We're not doing anything in California. Uh, we're not doing anything in the US. And um, also, I think just generally with the way that postage works in the US, so many people use flat rate shipping right. boxes. And I, that's, that would just be a lot more complication yeah. than we need. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, let's see, another question about localization. Fabulous Cat Papers from Greece says, would you consider going back before localization or is it a final decision for you? Uh, right now, these changes are live to everyone in the UK and Australia. And we're seeing, like I said before, really great results and we don't have any plans to roll this back. 
Uh, that said, you know, things change over time. We're always looking to make sure that we have the best buyer experience, that we're really like helping sellers out in these markets. Um, so if something were to go wrong, if suddenly like right. this wasn't working anymore, we would revisit that decision. But um, I don't foresee that happening. So we're doing it because it's working. Yeah, and if exactly. it stops working, we'll do something different. But, <laughs> right. right. Okay. Um, let's see. So uh, I have a question about timing, and this applies to all the search changes. Mm -hmm. Diane of Not Work in the U.S. says, why can't things like this be implemented long before the holiday season so sellers can roll with the punches during a slower time rather than when they're already busy? Right. So this is actually this is something we're super aware of. Yes. Um, and we made a lot of changes uh, to the way that search works this year. Mm -hmm. We really front load all of the changes that require sellers to do something to change how they're yeah running their shop or to edit listings, put those way toward the beginning of the year yeah. because we want people to be well prepared for the holidays. Um, that said, we also want to make sure that buyers have the best experience they can yeah. during the holidays and we want to get you the most sales that you can get during the holidays. So a change like this that doesn't really require you to do anything, we're comfortable making that ahead of the holiday season so that you can get more sales. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, anytime we talk about, like just to reiterate what you said, anytime we talk about anything we release in fall, we're always talking about this internally, like how does this impact sellers? Totally. We're completely aware that when people move into the busier months, and, and I think it starts in October, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, not only do people not have time to even, like maybe even read the email about these new changes, <laughs> but to like learn a new workflow, right. or just, they just have no excess capacity to do that. So we totally get that, and I think, in this case, we really weighed the benefit to the buyer experience, and we think the seller experience too, um, with this. And since you know, we everybody should have an about page. They right. should have policies, and so we feel like we're just highlighting the good work you do all the time. It's a really positive thing. Um, let's see, uh, what was your most memorable Etsy purchase? Uh, so, like I said, I started five years ago, mm -hmm. and I had a desk budget, um, and my desk budget purchase was really stressful for me. Like, I, at first I didn't have a desk for a really Can long time. Can you explain time. the desk budget so to our sellers? We, we, get, we get some money to decorate our desks. I think we got, that, I don't know if it's the same amount now, but five years ago I got $100 to mm -hmm. de decorate my desk. And I mean, if this was, Etsy was growing super fast and I didn't have a desk for months. <laughs> so I had like all of this time to think about, okay, I'm gonna have a desk and what's gonna <laughs> be on the desk. Uh, and I got it into my head that I wanted a diorama and I found this amazing seller who made these cigar box dioramas with like a glittery squirrel and like pom poms and a gnome. And it had like Christmas lights that plugged in and it had a music box. Um, it was amazing. And I blew my entire desk budget on it. It was like, it was like at least $80 and then shipping. I think I spent the whole hundred, um, but it was probably the best, the best like. It's gotta make you happy every time <laughs> you sit at yeah, your yeah, desk. Yeah. The glitter squirrel, it's yeah. amazing. Um, Let's see, so thank you for being yeah. here. Um, so I have a few, uh, a few just little reminders for you. Um, the first is that Jamie mentioned the education that we released recently with a lot more detail about search. Um, that is gonna be linked in the description of the video. So if you have more questions, I think the articles are so great and you can really read through and get a lot of very specific information. Um, one thing I think is very cool, uh, we're doing this year for the first time, um, Wednesdays in November and December are holiday help sessions on our Facebook page. So we're gonna have a lot of people um, here in the company at Etsy like working individually with sellers on shop critiques and improving your, your tags and titles and a lot of things related to search we talked about. And that will also be posted in the um, video description. And as always, you can email the support team um, through the Etsy, etsy.com backslash help. And I wanted to say that we're gonna pause on these through the end of December. We know you're probably too busy right now to actually watch any more of these, <laughs> even if you watch this one today. Um, but we'll resume in January and we'll be posting our topic for January very soon. Thanks y'all, talk to you soon.